Shark Dropper Studios presents to you. Doppel Avenue Hurt. Case one. Case one. The Silver Casket. Part six. Grace Kelly. That sound was Kath and O'Reilly walking out of the door, leaving me in a smelly, quiet office. I pondered for a moment. Well, maybe the case wouldn't be so tough to crack after all. She believed that the killer of her husband, Jeffrey O'Reilly, was someone who lived in this very house. If her hunch was true, I would find out. Although, she seemed a tad suspicious herself. Butler mentioned that there were six members of the family to be questioned, not including Terence or Butler himself. It was getting late, but I needed to talk to everyone. No big deal. I often sit up past my bedtime. Ooh, Mr. Keys. Are you ready for Master Peter? <sighs> yeah, Butler. Go ahead and bring him in. Butler disappeared from the doorway. A moment later, he returned with a tall man who from far away appeared to be elegant and suave, but under closer examination was actually disheveled and drunk. God damn it, Butler! Who put this door here? The man stumbled to the desk, his shirt untucked and his tie hanging limp. Master... Master Peter O'Reilly! I hate you! Thanks, Butler. The man leaned against the desk a moment. He composed himself and he sat. Too bad where he sat he didn't end up in the chair, but rather fell on his ass onto the ground. <laughs> Butler rushed to his aid. Oh, oh, Master Peter. Are you alright? Get away from me, Butler. I'm fine. God. Go away. Fine. I hate butter. Butter. <laughs> Look, man, he was just trying to help you. Please. That guy is a fucking menace. Don't act. Don't, don't. Don't act like you like your help. Nobody likes their help. I don't have any help. Wh what? How, how, did, how did you, how did you live? How did, how did you do that? Huh. How? How? Like most people? No, 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 like poor people. Ew. Wait, hold on. Wait, did you put your own clothes on? Like, with your arms? Uh, yeah, I do. Oh my god. And I make my own breakfast, too. What? What, what about lunch? Um, uh, yeah, last time I checked. Ew. Dinner? You don't you, you you don't make your own dinner, right? Come on, Mr. Keys, it's, it's just King Latifah in here. You, you don't make your own dinner, right? Yeah, I do. Oh, stop it! I hate hearing about poor people. It's sickening. Mr. O'Reilly, I just want to ask you a few questions, please. Call me King Latifah. No, I'm not calling you that. Then, P Peter. Yeah, that's it. Peter. Peter will suffice. Let me ask you a question, Peter. Are you intoxicated? Nope. I don't know what that means, but I am drunk. Yeah, I thought so. I mean, really? Do, do we have to go through this whole thing again? I already did this. We've never actually gone through this yet. You know what I mean. With, with the police and this whole taking down my question. I've already told them everything I know. Well, I need to ask you some questions. Fine. But don't keep me too long. I have a yacht party to get to. I'm a busy man. Yeah. Seems like a lot of you O'Reilly's are dancing and partying after such a tragic event. <gasps> Wait, hold on. Traffic? Wait, what traffic incident? 
I cleared that up months ago. Uh, your father dying? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's horrible. That sucks. Why don't we cut to the chase? Are you happy about your father's passing now that you get a little bit of what he's worth? Uh, Mr. Keys, I, I don't need that money. I've got my own. Don't worry. I, I... You sure about that? Seems kind of like his passing would bring you guys a lot of dough. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. Is that what you're making yourself for dinner? Because I thought we were talking about money. Dough is another term for money. Mr. Keys, my father dying is a sad, sad, <laughs> sad event. It was most definitely a murder. But unlike my mother, I believe it was a random shooting. I don't, I don't think anyone in this house would go through the trouble of putting a bullet in his head. Ammo is expensive, after all. The man was old. He was, he was going to die soon enough anyway. And just to let you know, his money, it, it meant nothing to me. I've already have millions. Which is a lot. And just to let you know, between you and me, I wipe my ass with $100 bills, Mr. Keys. Huh, what a waste. It, it isn't. I, I mean, I, I put the hundreds back in my wallet. My sausage wallet. <laughs> you get it. You get it? That seems disgusting. What? <gasps> yeah, well, it kind of is. The point I'm trying to make, Mr. Keys, is you're barking up the wrong tree. You'll never find the culprit there. So pick another tree, become a cat, a squirrel, I don't, I don't care. But climb it instead of this one. You're kidding me. What the hell is going on with this family? <laughs> okay, bye. A moment later, Butler returned with the next family member. Her name was Natalie. She was the daughter of Catherine and brother to Peter. She was beautiful in a countryish way, with her flannel crop tops and tight jeans. When she sat down, she fluttered her eyes. Mr. Keys, is it? That's correct, Miss Natalie O'Reilly. Actually, it's Natalie Brewster. I kept the name even though my husband and I split some time ago. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, then I'm sorry to say that. Natalie. May I call you Natalie? Yeah, that's fine. Her shy demeanor threw me. She didn't seem like she belonged in this family. I need to ask you a few questions. Please do. I'm always willing to help. Well, good. I'll be quick with the questions. Tell me about the morning your father was found dead. Do you remember it well? Yes. My mother woke me and told me the bad news. We went into the bedroom, Peter and I, but I stayed out of the bathroom. When Terrence came running in, him and Peter went into the bathroom. When they came out, Peter shook his head. I was in shock. My mother started dancing and Peter went to get breakfast. And then what did you do? I went to my room, popped in Giant on Blu-ray. I'm a big Rock Hudson fan. Then I fell asleep. You watched a movie. It calmed me. Where was Terrence during this? He called the police. <laughs> Glad someone did. I would have, but Terrence said he would take care of it. That's why I went to my room. When I woke again, the police were here and my daughters, Sarah and Melissa, were awake. I told them they were not going to school that day, and that's when I told them what had happened. The police questioned everyone. How do you feel about your father's passing? Upset. 
He would often come down to Snout of Texas to help with the ranch. Now it looks like I'll be all alone this winter. Not to say you seem much different from your mother and your brother. They can be a handful of times. It's like that old country saying, Two piglies with wigglies must be controlled, else there won't be no breakfast for the big and the bold. Well, that's an interesting thing to say. Did you learn that in the ranch? I learn everything on the ranch. It's my true home. I asked her a few more questions about the police procedure and what she thought actually happened. She said she didn't know, but that it could have been someone in the family. Well, Miss Natalie, I guess that does it. Thanks for your patience. I'll have to talk to your daughters, though. Preferably one at a time. Oh, about that. One of my daughters thinks you're a talent scout. But I'm not a talent scout. Yes, um, I know. But it was the only way I could get her to talk to you. She's a struggling actress, and we felt it may be easier if you pretended to be a talent scout. Maybe slipped in a few questions here or there. You know, between the evaluations of her performance. How would that be easier? Sarah! <sighs> Jesus Christ, this family's nuts. But I had to talk to everyone if I was going to get a clear picture of each and every family member. Butler shuffled in with Sarah Brewster in tow. Natalie decided to stay and help me with the daughter. Although, I would have rather have done this alone. Sarah? This is that talent scout we were talking about. Oh, he doesn't have a police uniform like the last one. Psst. We had to tell her all the police are part of some Doppel Avenue show. This is, this is really weird. I know. Go ahead, honey. He's watching. Okay, Mom. <clears throat> Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime guy. Send me a kiss by wire. Baby, my heart's on fire. If you refuse me, honey, you lose me. Then you'll be left alone. Oh, baby, telephone and tell me I'm your own. Oh, shit, this bitch is weird as fuck. Bravo, bravo. You see what she did there? She replaced the lyric ragtime gal with ragtime guy. But she's a girl. Can I ask the questions now? Hurry, slip some in. I think she's getting ready to sing Oklahoma. So I put my hands up to play in my song. It was definitely tricky asking this girl questions. But what else could I do? Her mother said she wouldn't really talk to me if she knew I was only a PI. The depressing thing was that it actually worked out got the information I needed, even though Sarah didn't even know much. It's a party in the USA, yeah! It's a party in the USA. I can also dance if you want. <clears throat> We're good. We're good. I'll, um, I'll give you a call sometime later. Really? Sure, whatever. Natalie escorted her daughter out and brought in the other daughter, Melissa. Natalie felt Melissa was a little better by herself, so she left the room. Good. Back to normal. Hello, Melissa. Hi. You know I'm a private investigator, right? Sigh. Of course, my sister's dumb. Did you just say sigh? Scoff, no. What? Never mind. Melissa, I need to ask you a few questions about... Yeah, yeah, I know. Groan. Why do you do that? Do what? The, th the noise thing. Why are you pronouncing them? Scoff, I'm not. There. You just did it right there. Deep sigh. What are you talking about? Deep sigh? Wait, deep sigh? What are you talking about? No. No, what are you talking about? Murmur, 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 murmur. Why are you murmuring the word murmur? You can just... What is wrong with you? Me? No, nothing. Look, I, I can't handle this right now. Do you know who killed your grandpa? Do you have any suspicions or... No. Good. We're done. Thanks. Bye. I didn't even feel like dealing with her. I doubt she knew anything important. I looked at my watch. Damn, that was late. My stomach grumbled. How much longer would this take? The door opened, and instead of butler, Natalie came in. She pushed an old man in a wheelchair over to the desk. 
This must be Grandpa O'Reilly. What? What's going on here? Grandpa, I told you. There's someone here to see you. Oh, is it her? It is. Wait, what's going on? He likes Grace Kelly. Okay. If you want to question him, you have to act like Grace Kelly. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. What's going on? Who's here? Grandpa, it's Grace Kelly. No, it's not. Sir, my name is Mr. Keys. I'm a PI. I'm looking for your son's... What now? I'm a private investigator. I'm here to ask you a few questions about... Natalie, get me out of here. I ain't talking to any blue suit. But I'm not a cop. Get me out of here. I want to go back to my couch. But, Grandpa... Couch! Couch! Cushions in my couch! Quick, act like Grace Kelly. I don't even know what that entails. Sound like her. No, I, I don't know how to impersonate her. Wait a second. Is he blind? No. Well, then I'm at a loss. If he can see me, what good is a voice? He will only talk to his family or Grace Kelly. It's like the old country saying, Imitate a cow and you won't get no milk or no butter, but if you imitate a goat, you can do whatever you like, because now you got an udder. But cows have udders. There's no way that's a saying. And if he can see me, there's no point to doing a voice. It will work. Wait, you said he'd only talk to his family or Grace Kelly, so how about I just impersonate one of you? There are no more. No distant cousins? No, they're all near. No long-lost relatives? We found all of them. It doesn't make any sense. He's looking at me right now, like right now. He can clearly see that I'm not Grace Kelly. This is all very ridiculous. Mm Mm-hmm. So, are you going to imitate her, or...? Oh, God, fine. Um, hello there. What? Who's that there? It's me, Grace Kelly. I can't do a woman's voice. Keep going. You're doing good. God. I need to ask you a few questions about your son's death. Natalie, Grace Kelly's here. I know. What would you like to know, dear? <coughs> if you have any suspicions as to who murdered your poor son. Once again, I was stunned. This family was nuts. Natalie was the most normal of the bunch, and yet here she was, forcing me to act as Grace Kelly. Surprisingly, at least to me, it worked. I got the information I needed. Turns out, Grandpa Riley wasn't fond of his son. That makes another. He mentioned how he heard a scuffle in his son's room, but chalked it up to him slipping on some coins. I continued to take notes. When the interview was finished, I asked for some water. Butler had brought me a thin, tall glass with two ice cubes and a slice of cucumber. Now it was time to interview him. Butler, do you like working for the O'Reilly's? Oh, yes. Very much so. Even though they treat you the way they do? I mean, they act like you're worthless. Mm, Yes. Yes, they do, but but they pay me very well. So it's about the money. Mm, Yes. I guess everyone who lives here only cares about the money. Mm, Money is important. Sure. Problem is, when it becomes too important, people do stupid things. Do you think anyone here might have done a stupid thing? And by stupid thing, I mean commit a murder? Mm, 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 No. No one here would do such an egregious thing. That's what you believe. Are you are you okay? Mm-hmm. This guy have a stroke or what? What's going on? Mm-hmm. Yes. Are you having a stroke? Mm-hmm. Mr. Keys, you're still here. 
Mr. O'Reilly, I am. It took longer than I thought. I should mention, I believe Butler here is having a stroke. Just taking a long time to answer. You just gotta kick him in the back. You know, get him going. Oh! Oh my! It's the worst. I hate him so much, it's hard to find good help. Don't look at me, Butler! Look at the corner of the ceiling! Oh, yes, sir. I hate it when he looks at me. His dumb gaze. He's so stupid and old and worthless and stupid. Is that a crack in the ceiling, Butler? Go fix it! Mm, yes, Master O'Reilly. Try to give him something to do, you know, so he's not near me. Mm. Anyways, Mr. Keys, I hope my family wasn't too much trouble. Well, as I stand here and look at my notes, I can't help but think your family may have a few... Problems. Yeah, in a word, I guess. Actually, it's my favorite word. Plural word. My favorite singular word is catacombs. Wait, that's plural too, isn't it? Terrence. May I call you that? That, or Prince Latifa. I'll stick with Terrence. Have you ever seen Murder on the Orient Express, Mr. O'Reilly? No. But I've seen Speed 2, Cruise Control. I don't know why you just told me that, but okay. I'm trying to make a point. There's a famous scene on Murder on the Orient Express. Wait, don't ruin it! It's my, it's in my queue. We have one of those internet flicks things? No, but my movies do wait in line. <sighs> Look, I'm just trying to ask you an important question, and Orient Express has a scene that relates. Oh... You said murder on the Orient Express. I thought you said turd, a florist has to press. Really? You're talking about that famous scene on the train. Wait. Are you trying to say what I think you're trying to say? Depends. If you know what I'm trying to say, or if you just think you know. Well, I think I know what you're trying to say. And I have to say, I think it's the truth. Well, if you think it's the truth, maybe you should just come out and say it. I know it's the truth of what you think. But it isn't the truth I know. Because what I know is actually what you think is not what actually happened. You don't know what I think. You think my family killed my father. Oh, okay. Well, then you know what I think. Do you know how preposterous that sounds? Well, a lot of family members seem to be quite happy about your father's demise, which makes me think, maybe, just maybe, one of the members of your family put a bullet in your father's head. It was someone else. May I see the bathroom? Do you have to flog Mr. Little Keys? What? Do you have to wee? No. I want to see where the murder took place. Then maybe have a wee. We headed upstairs down a long corridor, which was under construction, into the master bedroom and into a larger bathroom, complete with tub, toilet, and bidet. The glow of the work lights outside made the room a tinny yellow. Well, stupid construction workers, leaving the lights on again. This new wing is going to cost us plenty if they keep leaving the lights on and driving up all the electricity. Why the new wing? A bigger house is a better house. That's what my father used to say. I walked around the bathroom, taking it all in. I jotted down a few things. Where the window was located. The door. The tub. How long do you think it'll take you to solve this? I'll pay you as much as you want. There's really no way to tell. Well, I hate to bring this up, but at the meeting I went to earlier, a little problem arose. It turns out the murder is going through next Saturday. And if they find out Desmond Grant is behind bars, they're likely going to withdraw. I can't have that. I'll lose millions. Possibly billions. I can't rush it. A case like this needs time. Please, 
You have to find the real killer. You gotta get Desmond out of jail. I'll buy you anything you want. A Rolex, an LED TV, a jacket made out of Loch Ness Monster, a toilet made out of solid gold. You just got to do it. Wait, what kind of car? I'll get you a nice one. A Lamborghini, a Porsche, a station wagon, a Yugo, a pogo stick, whatever you want, just get him out. Hmm, no. What am I thinking? I have to do a thorough investigation. I'll go through all the police documents and the interview notes. Fine. Just want to solve this. And anything you need, I'll do it. Whatever. Well, actually, now that you mention it, there is one more thing I need. Another interview. Of course. With whom? You. Our boy James Keyes is on quite the tear. Hell, the next thing you know, he'll want to interview me. Well, what about my unpaid parking tickets? Does he know about the tax fraud I committed in 98? Wait a minute. What about the dead hooker I left in my Trans Am? Jesus Christ! Gracie, get my lawyer on the phone! Find out next week if I have a job on the next Doppel Avenue Hurt. Doppel Avenue Hurt. Written by Robert M. Lamb. Edited by Jonathan Moss. Starring Kyle Appleyard. Anita LaRose. Amy Laurie. Jose Carabello. Dan Johnson. Jonathan Moss. Adam Jetmore. Amber Simpson. And Shannon McCarthy. With featuring voices by Robert M. Lamb, John Lazavoff, Nick Engelhard, Justin Stewart, Mike and Heather Linhart, Jesse Levine, Nicole Green, Shannon Lee, and Michelle Birmingham. Visit www.sharkdropper.com to hear our other podcast, Horror Play, the search for the scariest video game ever made, Word of the Bay, a Tampa Bay based sports podcast, and the Shark Dropper podcast, where we talk random stuff with a mixture of improv. Also, we have an upcoming Academy Awards podcast titled Snub, where we rate each year's best motion picture nominees.